every day when I wake up trying to see your face It could only have been you, no one in your place Sometimes I feel it deep, so it's hard to say But I forget Hi guys, welcome to our My Life Podcast episode 3, woo! My name is Joshua. And I'm Chi Chi. Great, so Chi Chi's my wife and today we're going to be doing the My Life Podcast episode 3. So, you ready? Born ready. Okie doke. So, first question, oh this is about the wedding. What was the process of planning, budgeting and joining finances together for the wedding? That's... It feels like a throwback now. Um, I say like you have to start. Did we even start with a budget? No, we didn't. <laughs> we started off trusting the Lord. <laughs> um, <sighs> but I think no. I remember now. I was very adamant that I did not want to spend money on a big wedding if we didn't own a house. That was my whole thing. Like, I didn't mind if whatever the cost was going to be, the cost was going to be, but it just didn't click in my brain to spend, like, tens of thousands on the wedding and then go and start renting. Mm -hmm. That was my whole thing the whole time. So, like... Not to cut you, but to be fair to you, yeah, you're right. And I think um, that's a that's a point in terms of, like, men and women in relation to marriage, like, listening to your partner in that option and decision, we ha- I had an opportunity to listen to you and say, you know what, you have wisdom and foresight as well. So in that sense, I was like, you know what, yeah, let me listen. How do we do this? How do we pattern this? And we actually even started saving when we were dating quite early on. Yeah, that was another interesting... Challenge. Uh, challenge. Because I was pushing for it because I could just see that, like, if we didn't start early when we got to where we were going to, it was going to be techie. Mm-hmm. And I was just was like, look, like we need to start having a pot for the future. And I think if you're sure about your person, obviously it comes at different times. Mm-hmm. But I think even if like, you know, you don't feel comfortable joining finances yet, individually, you should have a commitment to saving money. Yeah. And when the time comes, how much each of you are going to be able to bring to the table. Because if a thing locks off, then, you know, that's sad, but at least you'll <laughs> you have a pot. a pot for yourself for, you know, the right situation. But I think it's very, very, very important um, because then you have options. Because when the time came for us to put a deposit down, like and all of that, and start applying for a mortgage, we have the money to do it. And I think if if you're start, starting from ground zero and you're applying the wedding, then that's tough. But yeah, so for me, once that was out of the way, like once we had the deposit and everything, we were able to say, okay, look, like um, this is what we're trying to achieve. And I also think the that's where we started off. We started off from the amount of people that we wanted to have. Mm -hmm. That's always the basis of planning a wedding Mm -hmm. because everything hinges on the amount of people that you're having. If you're having 100 people, then, you know, it's going to be different. We had a massive wedding. 400 plus people. 450. Oh, 450, yeah. Yeah. And then the traditional was like 300. No, 250. We had planned for 300, I remember. I'm pretty sure it was 250. It was 300. I mean, give or take, but it was. I'm pretty sure it was 300. Maybe, maybe. Um, and that was also because then you're having two events. So then that's even more cost. So you have to <clears throat> start from there and then everything else dictates it. I'll also say that we had a lot of help. We had a lot of help from Josh's parents, my parents our families, like my brothers, your siblings. So that ultimately helped us. But yeah, we get to the guest list, then, you know, you're able to kind of plug things in. That determines the size of venue you need. Obviously you have like 
I don't want to say more basic, but more standard venues. Then you've got your luxury venues, then all of that sort of stuff, food, everything. So it's all, I would say ultimately it's the process is driven by the guest list. Yeah, I think the process of planning, boosting, joining finances. I think that was the point earlier on when we decided, okay, we're going to save together. For me, it wasn't wasn't necessarily an easy decision. I think in my heart, I kind of knew this was person was the one for me. Um, so it was kind of. But then when I get advice from people, they were like, hmm. "Are you sure you want to start saving together?" Hmm. Um, and to be fair, it was wise advice. It was wise advice. It was like, just make sure. Like, are you sure you want to start saving? Maybe you want to keep it separately. Do you know what I'm saying? You don't necessarily know how it's going to go or where it's going to go. And that's the truth. You don't necessarily know, but at the same time, you can have a... I, with that, I don't understand. Did they think I was going to take your money and run? But... No, but it's just about, like, when you start dating someone, like, you're not just merging everything instantly. Like, it's a process. Do you know what I'm saying? So at certain points and certain times, then you merge things. But for me, because I was confident in the direction of the relationship and where I wanted it to go and so forth, like, I don't date easily. So it's like... If I get into a relationship, I have to already see the future and and if and see it quite clearly in terms of or where it could go, and then I'm allowed. Then not even I'm allowed to. That then my body lets me or my brain lets me get into the relationship. Without that, it's just like a seeing thing, and it ends horribly. So um, in that situation, after a bit of advice and wisdom, I was like, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. And we started saving together, and then I think I can't remember when. Maybe it was like we had like two k or four k. There was a point when we hit a certain amount and I was like, wow, like, we're actually saving money together. So, um, yeah, it's good. And I think from then on, it got, it was kind of the same process. So we laid the deposit for the yard and we started saving together money for the wedding and putting it together and so forth. So it's kind of similar. Um, we kind of had an Excel spreadsheet. We used to track the costs in my Google Drive. That was good. I think it tracked a lot of the costs, but there were some hidden costs that we couldn't necessarily track um, and some final costs that hit us like... About, about two racks. More than that, about more three that. racks the day, the week of the wedding, two days before. About like two or three days before. And we'd done so well up to the wedding. And then that was like, yeah, credit card thing. <laughs> that was credit card thing. And I was like, yeah, okay. Um, but yeah. Strap in. <laughs> oh no, I just said, yeah, slap on the credit. I was so annoyed because we got did so well to not have any like credit or debt up to that point. And the two, three days later, bap, 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 completion fees, pay for this, pay for that. It's like, okay. I was saying though for time that you were like, oh, a completion fee is not going to be more than like five bills, six bills. I was like, I'm telling you, completion fee is going to be a couple racks. You're like, nah, I'm rebuking it. We didn't even have it. the pee for it anyway, so we had to pay on credit card. So was, <laughs> no, yeah. we didn't pay the completion fees on credit card. We paid it on our overdraft. And then... Part of it was on my credit card. <laughs> okay. You paid it on your overdraft. I paid it on my credit card. That a was new techie. credit card, we, you know. Literally. Tesco's credit card, bruv. Interest free. The thing I bought it for the wedding straight. The thing came free. <laughs> Two years, no interest, bro. I said, yo. Pied it. <laughs> and the time came, slapped it on. I was like, bro, I'm just paying that down slowly That's even now. Sick. Honestly, paying that down slowly even now. But um, thank God, man. So, yeah. Should we move on to the next question? I don't know if we answered the question. But um, the overarching <laughs> advice is that you got to come to the table with ideas of the direction you have to compromise on a lot of things and most of the time wives you hide costs from your partner because there are some things that you know Josh was like yeah I'm not paying for that but I just have to slide a little four bills hmm. back a dance floor for hmm. the trad if it, up to Josh you would have been dancing our traditional wedding on the wooden dance floor when it was lighting up you were enjoying it it does to that shack and you enjoying it, not knowing where it came from, bro. <laughs> Wooden floor, the floor lights up, Brother, the floor transforms nah, like a transformer. It does, I'll have been dancing and enjoying myself bruv, anyway. That wooden but. floor wasn't it, but yeah, so most of the time wives you got a, you know, a little the boots on here, a little you know, you got a slide. I think just work together, there. man, and also like recognise it's like the biggest one of the biggest parties you're ever gonna throw, really. So like yeah, put into it, man. Make it a special night, make a special moment. Have it how you want. 
um, and then go forward from there, but also secure your future. Your future as well. Because the wedding is one day. Yeah. The wedding is actually one day, so don't go broke for one day and not secure your future. Because for me, like that's one thing I have no regrets over the wedding because we had secured what was going to happen the day after the wedding, and I think that's really, really, really important. Sweet. All right. So we're going to the next question. Do you have a card? Do you have a... This one? Yeah. So, was it important to have similar cultures when considering marriage? Yes. Next question. No, I'm joking. Um, yes, for me personally, it was because I know that it skips a lot of hurdles. I know that if you have similar cultures or similar backgrounds, I'm Nigerian, she's Nigerian. We're not both same tribe, so I'm half... LMA half Yoruba, which is cheese, AKA half. Rivers. Yeah, from River State. So my dad's from yeah. River State. My mum is Yoruba, um, but she is half Edo, half Ibo. Even though she claims the Ibo side. Um, if my dad sees, it's going to be vexed. So it's no, it's the truth, that. don't it? That's the truth, isn't it? You claim your Ibo side proudly, but your Edo side, you're not claiming that as proud, and that's your dad's side. <laughs> but anyways, she. Um, we were both Nigerians, so there's similarity. But even then, in the tribes, those differences. Massively, I would say. I want to say massively. Because in the way you do things. Think about how broad the difference could be in terms of, let's say I was Nigerian and you were Indian. Do you know what I'm saying? That's techie. <laughs> that's, that's, when you say massively, that's what I'm reaching. Like, yo, I'm Nigerian. You're, that's actually techie. you're Czechoslovakia. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like... Y'all doing this to you. I'm doing, do you know what I'm saying? But there was a similarity that was very apparent. Yeah, it's a, a general respect. understanding. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, respect for elders, cultural understanding. Like, when we came to your house, when my family all came, my extended family came, and that whole process, like, I know you, you, you weren't necessarily on doing that kind of, like, step. So part of the traditional wedding process is that we have to go to, or the man's family goes to the woman's house to kind of, collect their bride per se in it but it's like a part of the wedding process so my family all got ready in uh, attire and came down to southeast london i came to meet cheese family and they hosted us and we had a good time and we ate and chill and um that was like a cultural expression I don't know what i'm trying to say and i think like the nature of our parents understanding my understanding of my culture meant that when I came to your parents and so forth, yes, there's a bit of a gap in terms of like, I think how your dad like kind of positioned himself in your family and my understanding of that. But ultimately in our culture, respect your parents, respect your elders. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And we have a lot of that. So I think there was a big similarity there that I saw, I thought, okay, cool. This skips a lot of hurdles. I know some people who are in relationships and they've got like an Indian or so forth like partner and their family is just saying yo like nah that's so wild in 2023 though like in, just, in my yeah. opinion because same, no? especially if you live in the UK in cities like London Birmingham Manchester whatever like it's so your every culture is everywhere you know what I'm saying so you're so kind of interlinked even if you don't have a deep understanding of the culture like you have some base level because i remember growing up and being in nursery like most people from london will have this experience like you just have every race of person in your nursery and so you just have a basic to like standard level of culture other cultural like other cultures how they interact with each other. You hear different languages all the time. Like Londoners are, most Londoners anyway, will be super comfortable not hearing English and might be able to identify the region. You know what I'm saying? Like the country or whatever. So it's so weird now when I hear that people, like obviously you might have some reservations if you're maybe Nigerian and you your child comes home with someone who's maybe Turkish Cypriot or something and then you just have no clue about their customs and stuff Mm -hmm. you might have some reservations but to be like yeah nah that's kind of wild but you know each to their own 
That's it, man, isn't it? It's just people groups and so forth and cultures. But for yeah, for me, I think it was important. I think you just skipped a lot of hurdles and made sure we had a similar understanding from Rip. So what do you think was important to you? Yeah, I think, honestly, I... Um, I just think nowadays, like, a black family setup is important. Um, it was... It, it, it became important for me. And I think that marriage is, like... It's not just, I love you, you love me. There's just so... Now, being married, you kind of understand that even infinitely more... And you need a village. You need, like, marriage, you need as me- <laughs> to be in agreement on as many big themes as possible. Yeah. Because that is, like, there's just so much to get on the same page about that if you're not on the same page about big things, like how you want to raise your children, like, what is important, how you want to, like, instill your culture into them especially like for people who are second generation immigrants now our kids are like third generation so obviously they get some they will get some nigerian culture through us but it's not going to be the same way we experienced it from our parents because Mm. we've grown up here like we have culture understanding they're going to know where they come from experience their grandparents all of those things but their parents are essentially a blend of cultures, which is black British culture, which in itself is a culture and then Nigerian culture, which is all just mixed up in that because even when we were growing up, there was more distinct Jamaican culture, distinct Niger culture, distinct. But now Mm -hmm. I feel like the music, especially with the rise of Afro beats and everything, like black British culture is more like the sound, the food, it's all like a mesh. Now you'll see man with jollof, and curry goat mm. on the same plate. And back in the day, that wasn't a thing. Do you know what I'm saying? As well. <laughs> so essentially what I'm trying to say is that getting on the same page is super important. And that same page might even look like Jamaicans and Nigerians. It's, it's still very different cultures, but that black British culture understanding, because now Jamaicans more time will call like... African mums, yeah, auntie. That's like a thing, do you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. of the culture understanding. So yeah, I think I think it's important because it's a big theme. Culture is a big theme. The food you eat, the way you do things, the way you speak, the way you, you know, go about things, the way you move. Um, so yeah, I would say so. Sweet. We're on the same page. I don't know if people are going to come for me in the comments, but... <laughs> It is what it is. <laughs> right, question three. What were some of the challenges you both faced leading up to the wedding? Should I start? Do you want to start? Uh, I don't know. This is going to be a lot. This is a techie question. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the challenges we'll face up coming to the wedding. Um... So one was navigating and dealing with parents. So Mercy God. I say to people when I speak about it, I'm like, that was the time when I learned how to say no to my mum. I realised that beforehand, I hadn't really been saying no because I never needed to. I never put myself in the position to have to say no. I more just did my own thing. And then we might not see eye to eye, but I'll just do my thing. It is what it is etc etc but now we had to directly collab on bringing this wedding to pass and she has a vested interest because um her son and weddings in nigerian culture are such a big thing it's like yeah time to kind of show off a bit like my son's getting married like i want to come out i want to dance on a vibe I want all my people's there come so, and see what the lord has done you know what I'm saying? <laughs> for, for real for real <laughs> <laughs> For real. So um so ultimately like, I went in about four fifty guests and we just split down the way where I had one twenty five No, two two five. 
Two two five for me and two two five for your half, but then we split it in terms of our own families accordingly. Innit? I don't know how you split your team. That's what I'm gonna say. So but I did my thing. <laughs> so in that split, um, not even before that split, my mum was wanting two hundred guests of her own guests to come to the wedding. Two hundred of her own guests. That's <laughs> some people's half. Half of wedding. them mind that I didn't even know. <laughs> Half of them man haven't even seen me for you know them aunties and uncles that would say, I used to carry you Bruv. when we were on the plane I tonight. I've seen you for 25 years. I used to carry years. you on my knees. Don't you remember me? No. I was three years old. I don't remember. <laughs> but um, That's wild. Um, in that process and a couple other things where I had to learn to be like, like, no, we can't do this. And my mum, like, when she hears no, it was like, oh, well... Just do your wedding yourself. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. I'm not coming anymore. Just have fun. Just go and do your wedding. Enjoy it and so forth. Just, just leave me. Just have us like, oh my days. Like, one thing but, about Nigerian parents, they're going to guilt trip you, bro. Brother, I just, oh my Lord. I, just they give are me, going to trip you with guilt. Just try and give me one, if you can, give me one plate of rice. I'll sit at the back. You're like, bro, just Give like, it a rest. Please. Please. <laughs> so that was difficult um, in and of itself. Ultimately, when came round, I just had to learn to say, like, no, and just be okay with the consequences. Um, and that, but obviously, ultimately, it turned out really well. So um, that was one. I think another thing that Chance faced me was like managing the clash between my wife and my mum. Or not clash, but like. If they didn't agree on a point, me being the middle point and like how to navigate that, that was something for me that was hard to do um, and hard to like be in that position and navigate. And I've actually had conversations with other people about this and they've gone through a similar thing, which is why I'm bringing it up because at the start, I was feeling like I had to be like the waypoint and had to manage my mum's expectation, manage my wife's expectation. And I'm, I'm trying to protect both my wife and my mum from each other in terms of them potentially seeing each other as the aggressor or the antagonizer and have this bad view oh, of each an- other. You mean antagonist? Oh, antagon- antagonizer is a word as well, though. I'm not sure it is, but it's in that Antagonizer word. is definitely a word, right? You are a antagonizer, but you can see someone as an antagonist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm seeing your person as being the antagonizing person or antagonist. Um, my, so- <laughs> my brother's looking at me like, <laughs> see English. Uh, <laughs> So um, that was tricky. That was really tricky to navigate. And something that got to a point where I just felt like I'm just between a, a rock and a hard place. And I think ultimately happening in that situation was just like you guys kind of just, you went to your mum and then your mum talked to my mum. And then you hearing back from your mum led you to see it from my point of view. And then we went forward. I don't think that's what happened. I think that's what happened. I don't think that's what happened. I think that's what happened. I'm not sure it is, but K. I I think that's what happened. Selective memory, but K. That's, anyways. I think that's what I remember that date. It was in January. I remember it specifically because I had to go to Birmingham for work and I was already vexed because I was bare tired and the whole wedding thing was just becoming like, it was on top. So ultimately, and we had had beef the day before. So your mom said to you and squashed it, and then you were comfortable with doing the thing that was being asked of. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So that was my view. It's like, yo, like. That's not how you presented it, though. <laughs> okay. All I'm saying is, yes, that was another difficult challenge. That was another challenge to face. Um, and I think, yeah, like, I've spoken a lot. Maybe you share some of your challenges. What was the question again? Uh, what were some of the challenges you both faced leading up to the wedding? Oh, for me, like, 2022 was a really trying year because it was just so heavy. Like, there was just so much going on. And we had the house going on. We had the wedding going on. We had um, some personal challenges in my family going on, some personal health challenges that we were all trying to navigate. Um, I had been promoted at work, so I had more responsibilities. And that was just like, I remember getting to the honeymoon and feeling, like I basically slept almost the entire time because why are you making that face? Mm-hmm. you're like I can confirm <laughs> because 
you don't realise until you get a bit of a breather, you don't realise you've been just going on adrenaline for ages. Yeah. Because even then, like, before the wedding events, like, when your parents came the first time in November, that was a big thing. In November? Yeah, the end of November, I think, just after my birthday. Um... It was, was the that end of November. To yours? To or? my parents, yeah. When was that? The first time they came. Oh, they like, that wasn't when it was all white, was it? No, that was the second time. When the, when the first time? Oh, yeah, I remember. Some of my idea, yeah, yeah. Good. So that was all hands on deck. Yeah, I remember. That was just crazy. We had to, like, just pattern so many things. And it was, like, a lot of people. Because we, you got a big family. So. Big immediate family. I've got a big immediate family, so, and then my cousins and stuff, so it was just busy. And then I think my uncle even came that time, the first time as well. Mm -hmm. And then the second time, it was again busy, you know, like it was all hands on deck. And in between that, we're working, we're buying a house. We're mm-hmm. trying to just stay financially afloat because you're saving for a wedding, saving for a house, but you still have to live, you still have to do things. Um, and then, you know, we had my parents lost money and some business and it was just a lot. Like, it was really a lot. Mm. And then, tragically, we lost um, my auntie about five weeks before the wedding mm. and that was like another emotional blow to the fam and I just feel I felt last year like I was in a pressure cooker I honestly I grew from it but it was tough you know or just on a personal level and I feel like I spent a lot of time just you know just going just going through the motions and it was weird because it should have been everyone thought oh this must be the happiest time in your life but it was just the most. Like, I feel like sometimes God stretches your capacity because now, um, on the other side, I feel so much stronger. I feel a lot more agile. Like obviously, sometimes things are hard for me, but I'm able to manage a lot more. So yeah, that there was a lot of personal challenges for me. Um, the family, yeah, that was that was interesting. I think. For me, our relationship faced a lot of challenges during that time as well because you both envisage what your wedding is going to be like. But at the same time, on the other side, like, I didn't want to have a traditional wedding at all. Like, I never saw that on the cards for me. Mm. Um, But, you know, your parents were adamant about it. And in hindsight, I'm really glad we did it in the way that we did because I felt it was a beautiful cultural display some of our friends who had maybe never been to a traditional wedding before, mm-hmm. especially on like the level it was at, yeah. um, really had a great experience. And I had an amazing experience. So, yeah, like, yeah, that's my answer. Amen. Mm-hmm. Um, so my question is, did you both feel pressured to please everyone when planning the wedding? I didn't feel pressured to please everyone. I felt pressured to please my parents and my wife. That was the key pressure point. You felt pressured to please me? Yeah. Really? Interesting. Yeah, I did. Like, I just said, like, in terms of, like, making sure, like, obviously it's your wedding. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't want you to have a wedding that you look back on and be like, oh, we skimped on this or we skimped on that. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And even in this chance, like, how are we going to pay for all this? But shout out to my, like my G.O.D., my father in heaven. It came through in a big way. But, um, yeah, I felt pressure in that sense of, like, let's have the wedding that, like, you want to have. Do you know what I'm saying? Even though you didn't necessarily want it to be as big as it was, and obviously you had to concede on some points, I still wanted you to, like, have it as a day that, you know what, yeah, I love this day. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Um... And obviously, I wanted it to be a great day as well. I wanted it to be, um, I wanted it to look fly. What? Well, I wasn't necessarily wanting to look fly, but then my suit ended up with me looking fly. Do you know what I'm saying? So it was like... You didn't want to look fly. I wasn't like super you obsessed. You to lie to you. No, 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 no. Not, like, I wasn't super obsessive looking fly, but 
my suit made Western bespoke. Shout out Junior. Bruv, that suit was oh my days. When you put it on me, I felt like I was getting crowned. Do you know when them ones when they get knighted and they get the sword? Bruv. I just stood, I put my arms up and he put it around me. I was like, hmm. Jesus, it's Lord. <laughs> Bruv, my suit was crazy. That's crazy. You know my suit was crazy, isn't it? I guess. Was my suit crazy? Yeah, it was hard. Come on. It just was hard too, to be fair. But no, like, yeah, I did feel that pressure. But um, I think ultimately we're able to make it the wedding of our dreams, ultimately. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, definitely. We're able to make it the wedding of our dreams. It was definitely the wedding of my dreams. Um, like location, the church, the trad, the all my peoples, man. My peoples being in the same place, man. Some people, like, just... That's the weirdest thing so about a wedding. People, man. That's the weirdest thing about it. It's like everyone in your life in the same place is such a weird it's so weird but yeah, it's, it's so nice yeah it's lit man because it's you're lit. like you've got your work people you've got like church you've got your family you've got like your friends you're like right everyone i know and love is in the same location yeah. at the same time which is the greatest feeling it's and lit, they're man. just having a good time and later on people told me oh you know, I got to know this person, I got to know your auntie, I got to know... And you're just like, when did you have time to do all of this? But, yeah. you know, but yeah, sorry. Go on, no, no, it's fine, I agree, man. And I think it's just, for me, a big thing. So, what was the question again? You're the one, am I the one who asked? Yeah. It? Did you both feel pressure to please everyone when planning yeah. the wedding? Yeah. Um, so, in terms of pleasing everyone, as I said, yeah, you, my parents, I make sure everyone's happy, make sure my mum was happy. In terms of like her allocation and so forth, but ultimately she was gonna just rock with kind of whatever. Um, but then also, yeah, I just wanted the wedding to be like a, everyone to enjoy themselves. Like I'm big on everyone enjoying themselves in my environment, and from the feedback that we got from everyone, they were just like, yeah, yeah. Like funny story, um, we had planned for the an open bar, so we went, we copped all the drinks, bought everything, and so forth. We bought a lot of drinks, which I was actually against. I was saying, I don't think we need too many drinks. A lot of I was overruled. Drinks disappeared, but... Uh, I was overruled by the people the who were buying the drinks. The drinks disappeared, bro. Can we... On my point, I was overruled by the people who were buying the drinks. So uh, we had way more drinks. But anyways, it's what it is. Which disappeared, um, but anyways. So we were there, um, and then we wanted them to open the bar after the first dance, but... What happened was, I don't know what happened. I think the people you hired were... Why has it got to be I, the people I hired? Yeah. First of all, I'm not going to... Because I'm not wicked, I'm not going to name the weight, the company of waiters that we had. But they were absolutely shocking. <laughs> but anyways... But then the thing is, in their shockingness, they started serving drinks way earlier than we expected. They didn't even do the, op- the Prosecco reception that I specifically hired them for. But anyways, I'm not... I'm not salty about that anymore. I think all things work together for our good. And I think they hmm. started serving drinks earlier That's why on. we had mad Prosecco left over because they didn't even use the Prosecco for the purpose of which it was intended. But I digress. Yeah, it's actually shocking. shocking. Um, so they started, they opened the bar earlier than expected. So people were getting like vibes and getting waved earlier. And I think that just increased the vibe and energy in the room. So by the end of the night, everyone was just enjoying themselves. Obviously, it's an open bar. You're just doing your thing, in it? And I had some, like, uh, chief instigators in terms of pouring people shots and all this sort of thing um, who were just doing their thing. So all in all, man, amazing day. What do you think about um, people? Um, I didn't pressure feel to pressured to please everyone at all. Like, I felt like this is my wedding day. If you want to feel pleased, <laughs> get married yourself. <laughs> because ultimately, if you're spending racks on a day, you can't come and tell me what to do on my wedding day. I'm so sorry. You know what I'm saying? Like, your wedding day is the one day that you get to say, you know what? Under God, like, this is how I want to bring my vision to life. Obviously, like, my parents my family, you, your family. There was a consciousness there because, like, they're invested in it. And it's also, you have to be aware that 
you're sharing it with them as well. You're sharing that time because it's such a joyous time. So I'd say with the guest list and all of that, you can't really be selfish and you cannot be a tyrant because then if you're a tyrant, then people don't really feel a sense of ownership in bringing everything together. I had like great bridesmaids, um, my in-laws, my family were really so amazing. So they, I felt like I wanted them to feel happy, to feel invested and to just ultimately, you know, have a great time. I wanted the, I would say I wanted the environment. I'm big on environment, maybe slightly OCD, but I am very big on environments being clean, being comfortable, people feeling like relaxed in the environment, wanting for nothing. So I would say in terms of the guests, if that's pleasing everyone, that was super important to me because I was like, how would I want to feel? Thought about if I came to wedding, food had to be overflowing, drinks had to be overflowing, all of that sort Mm -hmm. of stuff. But in terms of like the aesthetic and, you know, what I wanted to wear, what I wanted to do, that's all my business, do you know what I'm saying? So that, in that sense, I didn't really feel it. But in the other sense of how you want people to feel in the space, like the the um yeah you want your guests to feel thought about i would say Mm. um my family are very hospitality leaned anyways so i think like my like my dad's a chef my mom is very much like cook overcook everyone come eat everyone come chill so that's kind of just our natural leaning like my brothers and i so yeah, I wouldn't consider that pleasing everyone, but yeah, I didn't necess- I didn't feel any pressure outside of like my immediate family, immediate in laws. That's probably a long winded answer, but that makes sense. Yeah. Okie doke. Brilliant. Well, that's been episode three of the Our Married Life podcast. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you at the next episode. Cut the cameras. Cut the cameras. Cut the cameras. Every day when I wake up trying to see your face It could only have been you, no one